Hello. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you very much. Okay, so okay, so hello everyone, welcome. So basically today we will try to discuss about that water quality monitoring using remote sensing technique. Okay. And how we can easily work with for the water quality monitoring, such as uh, total suspended solid, as well as also turbidity and chlorophyll index of water. We try to discuss about this part. So basically, this online training program we will take in for the two days. Uh, basically, today is our first day, and today I will try to discuss about that theory part and also try to discuss about the some practical example of this uh, water quality monitoring, how you can easily do. And second class, I also try to discuss about that web application, such as how you can easily create the water quality web application for the any region. Just we can create this web application and using this web application, we can easily uh, get the result about that turbidity, about that total suspended solid, as well as also uh, chlorophyll about that water body okay so let's go over today's class so i hope can you hear me clearly as well as i also share my screen okay can you hear me yeah, clearly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, can hear you. but like uh, to ask a question is it possible we can combine it within two days yeah it's possible so, yeah so combine uh we just need two days so first day we try to discuss about that theoretical part as well as also some practical example and second is we try to comp uh, talk about the web application, how we can easily create the web application in here. Okay. 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 So I hope uh, properly we can complete all of the things. There is no problem. And we can also get the recorded video class for your. Um... Okay. So let's go about that. So just I simply share my screen. Okay. Okay, so now can you see my screen? Yeah, so now screen is loading, yeah. Yeah, so now it's visible. Okay, so let's go, yeah. Okay, okay so I simply open my slide from here. So basically in remote sensing of water or also how we can easily monitor the water quality and basically a lot of parameters are available for the water but I in the in this training I only show you that total suspended solid then turbidity and chlorophyll but other properties which are also possible such as pH of water salinity of water so this type of parameter I will not cover in this part only we try to focus the total suspended solid than chlorophyll and turbidity of the water. So first of all, uh, here you can see the objective. So in this time we try to discuss about the some uh, theoretical, theoretical part about the suspended uh, mineral then chlorophyll and dissolved organic matter, how we can easily uh, factor for the influence in the water. So characteristics of the water body. So in the meantime, okay, so we simply go to our next slide. In this time, we are also used for the in-situ versus remote sensing measurement. Suppose you want to uh, make the, uh, check the accuracy of your remote sensing data using your in-situ data. Then you have to collect the some training point or collect the some ground water. And you have to need also make the uh, laboratory practical uh, monitoring such as you want to find out what is that total suspended solid of this water body so this type of result when you want to compare the result in your in situ and also remote sensing measurement data then you have to check the some ground water okay from your laboratory and then we can easily make the compare about that result and also check about our accuracy okay with our remote sensing data and now uh, it uh, we can easily measurement using the remote sensing for the different types of parameters such as water surface area such as stream river lake ocean 
वाटर कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट्स ऑर्गेनिक और इनऑर्गेनिक मैटर वाटर डेप्थ और बैथमिक फ्री वाटर सरफेस टेंपरेचर स्नो सरफेस टेंपरेचर स्नो वाटर इक्विवेलेंट आइस सरफेस एरिया आइस वाटर इक्विवेलेंट प्रिसिपिटेशन वाटर वेपर सो ऑल ऑफ दिस थिंग्स इट विल बी इंक्लूडिंग द वैरायटी ऑफ हाइड्रोलॉजिकल वेरिएबल for the special continuous and extensive information in uh, remote sensing we can easily do using the remote sensing this type of work and in this time we talk about that surface water biophysical traits how it will be work for the surface water biophysical traits so mainly in this time here we can see the equation about that total radiance okay total radiance equal to lp plus ls plus lb plus lb so here what is the lp lp is the atmospheric scattering then ls is the water surface radiance lv is the sub surface volumetric radiance lv is that water body bottom radiance okay so basically total radiance of water is the all of those summation such as atmospheric scattering water surface radiance sub surface volumetric radiance water body bottom radiance so all of those summation is that our total radiance so here you can see we are also get the figure look like that total radiance so you can see in this time sun and sky irradiance in here so it will be in here and atmospheric we also get in here so after key this is the water body you can see this is the water body this water body uh, mainly sun uh, reflected the heat okay then then this heat will be also reflectance and go to the atmosphere okay so in this time we try to find out the total radiance so total radiance is that all of those parameter all of those parameter such as atmospheric scattering water surface radiance sub surface volumetric radiance water body bottom radiance all of those things is the summation equal to total radiance okay so and we can also get that air minus water interface equal to boundary layer of this uh, water body okay so this is the equation for the total radiance of the surface water biophysical traits in this time we talk about the total radiance so just you remember that total uh, radiance is the summation of atmospheric scattering water surface radiance sub surface volumetric radiance and water body bottom radiance so now spectral response of water body so mainly function of wavelength pure water so mainly what is the pure water pure water we can divide it uh, main at no organic matter or no inorganic matter so in this time pure water in remote sensing uh, when you want to do that spectral response of water it, we can divide it into two part uh, if it will be there is the no organic matter up there is the no inorganic matter okay and please, then uh, yeah. hello uh, yeah please yeah i want to ask question on the second two slide before we come here so yeah the yeah. other one the one before this one yeah okay okay yeah, yeah. i want to ask um uh, you said we can use remote sensing to measure water surface area yeah i think i remember we did that then yeah, the water, water constituents then yeah, especially the water there which is the bathymetry yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, is there a spe special mm. how do you call it uh satellite instrument or product that is being used to measure the bathymetry or like any type of satellite instrument can be done can be used to do so yeah so it also possible to identify the water depth or bathymetry using the remote sensing okay so it also possible to identify the depth of the water okay it also possible. so then um, to ask all these things in google earth that one can um let's say model then be able to compute the water depth Oh, okay. Wow. In this time, all of those things, all of those things, we can extract from the remote sensing data. 
Suppose you want to identify the surface area, water surface area, it also possible. You want to identify organic or inorganic matter in the water body, it also possible. You want to uh, identify the water depth or bathymetry, it also possible. You want to identify temperature. Okay, so here I including all of those hydrological variable, all of those okay. hydrological variable, it and it also provide the special continuous of the water body. We can get all of this information from this remote sensing parameter okay. using the remote sensing different and, types of technique. Okay, and uh, looking at the resolution of the satellite, is it good? The accuracy or the resolution is it look good? Yeah, for the accuracy, we also need to get the in situ data. Okay, so you can simply go to this uh, uh, your field and also take the groundwater and this groundwater we also need to measurement in the laboratory for the total suspended solid or chlorophyll. Okay, then we can compare these two data. Okay. Suppose I also get the I also create this land uh, sentinel image for creating this type of total suspended solid using the different types of calibration equation. Okay, then I also get the some uh, data. So suppose total suspended solid as well as uh, chlorophyll as well as also get the some data about the turbidity. I can get some value. Okay, this type of value I need to compare with my laboratory data. Okay, then we can also compare this data and also calculate the um, accuracy. There is a lot of way for calculating the accuracy from RMSC method also ROC, rock car curve. Okay, different types of statistical. Uh, we can use when you want to identify the accuracy from your remote sensing data as well also in suit data which, uh, which you collect from the ground water okay uh, so it's a possible okay, okay. and this is a total uh, radiance how can easily get this total radiance calculate that so this is the total four factor defend this four factor summation it means the total uh, radiance or electromagnetic energy. We can get the total four sources. And in this time, uh, we talk about that organic or inorganic. So in this time, you can see uh, violet to blue. Okay, this uh, uh, wavelength is that 400 to 500 millimeter and less amount of absorption and scattering. Okay, so in this time, we can get the violet to blue mainly uh, this band least amount of the absorption and scattering and best transmission as well also green to near infrared uh, this uh, is that 500 to 800, 800 millimeter and significant absorption okay so mainly in this time you can see green to near infrared green to near infrared this band mainly a uh, significant absorption okay suppose when you want to work with that you want to only we want to uh, identify the significant absorption from the water and in this time green to near infrared this band is mainly used for significant absorption and violet to blue it is the least amount of absorption and scattering but it also best transmission for the transmitting this uh, reflectance but it also less amount of absorption as well as also scattering but in the meantime, also green and uh, near infrared, uh, this significant absorption for the organic or inorganic matter in the water body. So in this time, here we can get some of the monitoring on the surface extent of water bodies. So in this time, you can see this uh, discrimination of the land and pure water. So basically based in near and mid higher region. Okay, so basically based in the near and mid IR region, it is the best monitoring the surface extent of water bodies, this uh, band. And this resolution is that uh, also 740 to 250 meter nanometer. And water bodies in this time, we can get the water bodies in the very dry. Okay, because it looks like the uh, black because it high absorption of near infrared and mid IRR, mid uh, near infrared. Okay. And also, the land surface showing the bright. Okay, land surface showing the bright because it high reflectance of near and mid infrared. So in this time, you can see it's showing that when you want to see the satellite images, here we can get the black color. So it means that uh, it high absorption. When it will be high absorption about the near infrared 
and meet near infrared, then it look like this as a black color. Okay, and land surface look like that a uh, bright color and high reflectance of the near infrared and near, near infrared. If I, uh, it will be reflect reflectance is the high of near infrared, mid near infrared. So that's why it look like the bright and also identify it's a land surface. Okay, and for the water bodies we can get the dry because it is high absorption of near infrared and mid near infrared. So in this time, monitoring the surface extent of water bodies, so more difficult, mainly near infrared reflect, uh, re surface reflection, subsurface volumetric scattering. Okay. So basically, this is the photo. In this time, we can get this is the water body. Uh, this is the black color. Identify the water body, and it's showing that the uh, soil. Okay. So in this time, organic or an inorganic constituent. So difficult to extract the uh, quantity of information about the specific water uh, constituent from the remote sensing data. So mainly uh, we are doing using the subsurface volumetric radiance. We already uh, talked about the total four radiance, okay? And then another radiance is the subsurface uh, radiance, LV. Mainly it control the atmosphere scattering, LP, and also water surface radiance, LS, and water body bottom radiance, okay? So function of number of variables, Okay, in this time you can see that create an equation look like that. Okay, so in this time subsurface volumetric radiance function is that concentration of the pure water, which is the W, and inorganic suspended material, which are the SM, organic chlorophyll, CSL, dissolved organic matter, DOM. Okay, so all of those parameters or factor the total amount of absorption and scattering about that uh, takes place in the water column due to the is this constituent when you want to work with that so this is the equation you also try to remember that about that so basically in this time is the total amount of absorption and scattering of the water surface of the sub subsurface volumetric radiance can i also send you this uh pdf so it's a slide then you can easily also read about that again in this time we can get the some suspended mineral it can be silicon, it can be aluminium, it can be iron oxide. Particle size, you can also see that the 3 to 4 millimeter, sealed 5 to 40 millimeter, fine sand 41 to 130 millimeter, coarse sand 131 to 250 millimeter. Okay, and there are the different sources we can got, there is no problem. Suppose eroded meter materials from the land surface, uh, volcanic eruption and other etc source we can get it for the suspended mineral in the water body okay and uh, suspended mineral uh, this water clear deep ocean water and rarely contains the suspended mineral less than one millimeter in a diameter okay so in this time there are a lot of the things will be uh, about that theoretical part you also read about that it's not need much that in this time so in this time they are also showing us some uh, example about that and also you can see that also uh, calculated the nephlometric turbidity okay and this unit nephlometric turbidity we are also using in the remote sensing okay because this unit we can easily measurement in the laboratory okay so this type of tools we are using for calculating the nephlometric turbidity okay basically this result we can got in the ntu or short from is the ntu and it also called the lithometric uh, turbidity unit and we calculated the turbidity using this uh, unit nephlometric unit okay and this is the tools we are using for that calculating the turbidity for the uh, ground suppose uh, laboratory okay and also showing the result look like that okay so this result we can also compare with the remote sensing for the check the accuracy okay and this unit is the for the turbidity is the nephlometric unit Suspended mineral. So in this time, uh, this is also some theoretical part about that. So comparison of the spectral radiance curve of the clear water, water with the various level of the silt sediment, water with the various level of the clear sediment. Okay. So you can see in this time there is the um, uh, leaves of the clay, so sediment. Okay. So in this time I can get the curve. You can see very uh, this very dense dense curve. We can see all of those curve is the nearly. Okay, very nearly. But in this time we can get also some gap okay gap to gap we can get okay so in this time it means that uh, in this water with the various levels of the clay 
in this time there is a lot of clay in this curve okay and then it will be very silty so that's why you can get the some gap in here it, and it means that it is a clear water it means that it is a uh, not clear water or some sediment or heavy sedi uh, sediment is the stored in here in this water suspended mineral we already uh, discussed yeah any question, can ask? A question. Yeah. yeah please so uh, looking at what i'm saying the suits and the clay on the satellite is measuring the the, yeah, the quality with respect to depth, depth right yeah okay okay yeah so so okay, from zero so looking at the one on the the left is about 40 meters deep right the silt classification and the clay is about five meter deep okay okay yeah yeah okay thank you okay 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 but on um, the latent is not showing the depth or what is on the the y-axis what is that the written there so basically the, the unit. yeah so basically yeah. when it will be uh, say, uh get the information about that sensor and we can carve the sensor result for the uh, uh heavy suspended uh water which including the lot of sediment then we can get the carp look like that okay then it will be uh reduce the gap in this time okay. it's showing the reduce the gap this is the height okay so in this time we can it will reduce this height and in this time you can see so when you want to work with for the um clear water or pure water which are not including the lot of sediment then we can get the carp look like that okay we can get down some silica or lighter and in this time we can get the tracker Okay, a lot okay. of in here. Okay. Okay, so now suspended mineral uh, reflectance in all wavelength. So suspended sediment. In this time, it can be different types of mineral or inorganic or organic, doesn't matter. It will be mineral. And uh, it uh, reflectance in all wavelength increase. So all of wavelength will be increased when it will be uh, suspended mineral. And visible wavelength is that providing for the type, uh, near infrared, also providing for the type and suspend our sediment in surface water okay so in this time you can see near infrared band so mainly we are using this type of band for identify the suspended mineral because this is the visible length about that 580 to 690 nanometer okay and is the peak reflectance shape toward the longer wavelength suppose green red and near infrared in the visible region and this time chlorophyll okay so in this time chlorophyll can be different types suppose uh, plankton phytoplankton zooplankton uh, then also bacterial plankton okay algal uh, fungi okay all of those things is that chlorophyll you can consider in this time okay and all of those things we are not distributed because it's very difficult for the plankton phytoplankton or zooplankton when you want to very uh sentinel sentinel to image is a 10 meter resolution but when you want to more uh, work with the sentinel image, then it's also more difficult to identify the plankton, phytoplankton, geoplankton, or bacterioplankton, or algal fungi. Okay, so that's why in this time, all of those things we considered as the chlorophyll. Okay, and we determine the chlorophyll using the chlorophyll index. Okay, and all phytoplankton types have a difference concentration of the chlorophyll A. But in this time, we are not. Uh, classified this is the phytoplankton this is zooplankton okay all of those things we uh, try to show you that at the same time at the same water bodies all of the things we can show estimate of the amount of the general type of phytoplankton in a water bodies estimate of the health and the chemistry of the water bodies and change in the above okay so for that also you can see in this time we are also get this type of chart so basically uh, it's showing that the strong uh, strong absorption in the blue and red okay so you can also remember that when you want to work with the chlorophyll we work with for the blue and red band okay blue and red band we need to work okay all of the things i will try to show you practically when i want to work in this time you can see simply remember that chlorophyll mainly it is the percent of reflectance of the clear and algae land and water okay and uh, mainly it will be a reflectance in the peak in the green and it will be a strong absorption mainly chlorophyll is the absorption a strongly absorption about the blue and red band 
So that's why when you are want to work with for the chlorophyll, we are using the two band, blue band and red band. Okay, for the chlorophyll, identify the chlorophyll past tense. Because reflectance, high reflectance in green infrared band and absorption. So mainly it absorb the blue and red band for the chlorophyll. It can be phytoplankton, zooplankton, or bacterioplankton, anything. There is no problem. Okay, and is useful for measuring the amount of the chlorophyll. Okay, so in this time we are using the uh, when you talk about the chlorophyll, we just using here the blue and red band because it is strongly absorption from the uh, uh, from the chlorophyll. Okay, and it can be different types of phytoplankton, zooplankton, or bacterioplankton or other things. There is no problem. The chlorophyll uh, percentage also again the percentage reflects of the uh, clear and algae land in water. Uh, increasing the chlorophyll concentration cause decrease the relative amount of the energy reflected in the green, red, and uh, blue wavelength. Okay, red and blue wavelength. Then it will be uh, decrease amount of the energy reflected. Okay, and increase in the relative amount of the energy reflectance uh, green wavelength. Okay, so this is also chart showing the clear water. Okay, and also algae or chlorophyll water. You can get the distinction. Okay. So in this time also think about the suppose person reflects of the algae land and water with the various suspended sediment load. Okay, also get the some other description about that two types of okay organic concentration of the okay. So in this time you can see this is the formula. No suspended mineral sediment contains in case one. In this time, chlorophyll uh, relationship between uh, spectral band chlorophyll concentration. Okay, so this is the um, you can see. Upwelling radiance at selected wavelength x and y is the empirical derivative constant and empirical derivative constant x and y okay so it's different okay so there is the no any fixed about that this value is the different for the different region empirical derivative constant and also you can see uh useful satellite remote sensing system so also you can see that sensor which sensor you want to use for the useful satellite remote sensing for the chlorophyll in the ocean water, not only for the any specific pond or lake, mainly all of the satellite uh, sensor mainly provi uh, pro provide the information about the chlorophyll in the ocean water. So as also you can see, we can easily get the information from the chlorophyll all of the satellite, okay, all of the sensor and also the agency and also the satellite name, special resolution and band all of the things we can get so mainly all of those satellite uh, images all of the satellite imagery we, we are using for getting the information about the chlorophyll in the ocean but when you want to do for that for that uh, local uh, water boundary then it will be not work then we have also need to use the another satellite image mainly all of the satellite images mainly focus on the ocean water ocean also you can see the other Okay, all of the satellites is used for chlorophyll for in ocean water. So, uh, to ask, yeah, this, uh, how do you call it? This satellite instrument cannot be used for inland water. No, we have to also use the suppose sentinel or other types using the same concept, such as and green and near. But when, uh, this type of satellite image we can easily access for the Google Earth Engine uh, data catalog for the global ocean. All of this ocean we can easily get from the information and also monitor the chlorophyll about that, okay? Okay, sure. So, uh, go back one step, let me see something. Okay, so, no. no. Okay. Yeah, is it? Yeah, move uh, forward one. The, no, the next one. Okay. So, for instance, uh, looking at the re resolution, this is 1,100. 1, so, that's 1.1 kilometer. Yeah. So, in this time, uh, this resolution is that 1,100 meter. So, that's why uh, it, this pixel size. So, ocean... Um, mainly it will be only focus the ocean, ocean water. 
not the surface okay so that's why in this time it will be take the 100 1100 meter pixel area in the ocean and it's take the information okay. Okay. And, okay. and and look at like the satellite is it hajan one hajan or oh, therefore chinese is it global satellite okay so in this time this is the agency is the china but uh, we can also use the globally there is no problem okay this is the globally ocean we can get the data set but this agency is the china or japan or france also different types suppose this satellite is the uh, mainly uh, control from the china this satellite is controlled from the japan this satellite is controlled from the france okay but we can get the all of the satellite imagery for the uh, monitor the ocean water and we also get the information from this satellite image globally Anyone can use this information. Yeah. Okay, and also you can see the sea waves, mainly sea we are viewing white field of the view sensor. So this is another satellite. So mainly it's a very useful satellite uh, imagery. It will be provided. And also from that we can get the dissolved organic matter, chlorophyll. So also you can see chlorophyll to okay, atmospheric aerosol. So all of those bands also extract the different different types of information uh, in here you see waves so mainly see viewing wide field of view sensor this satellite imagery also used for the so application also you can see mainly we are using this satellite image for examining the role of the ocean in the global carbon cycle we easily monitor using that examine of the role of the oceanic factor in global climate change identify the magnitude and variability of the annual cycle of the primary production by marine phytoplankton determine the distribution and the timing of the spring blooms assess the dynamics of the ocean and the coastal current physical mixing so a lot of things we can easily do using the satellite from that sea wipes some applications are also included in here also you can see the global map of the chlorophyll only for the ocean water okay global map of the ocean water we can get from here okay and this is a surface you know, this is the black is the surface okay and uh, we can get the create that global map of the chlorophyll using this cof satellite images okay also you can see this is the also showing that uh, left and right also you can see this is the image it's showing that also you can see the chlor uh, chlorophyll also identify using that okay chlorophyll a concentration and it is a true color composite about that rgb color so c wipes has a some band so this is the RGB, R is that 670, G is that, green band is the 555, B is that 412 nanometer, okay? Then we can get this satellite image look like this. From this satellite images, we can easily uh, calculate the chlorophyll A concentration, okay? So here red is identify the high concentration, yellow is the uh, intermediate, and blue is that low. And it only works for the ocean. Okay, also you can see the chlorophyll in coastal and inland water we can also use for the chlorophyll a monitor and it also very difficult then in case i do the effect the suspended sediment and this of organic matter okay so in this time when you want to do for the chlorophyll in the coastal as well as also inland water in this time we try to discuss about that so first of all we need to atmospheric correction of the remote sensing data okay and google earth engine has a already benefit we already know about that Google Earth Engine has all of those images already done about the atmospheric correction, okay? But uh, we can also do for the other satellite, other uh, software such as ENVI or QJ software. So when you want to do the, this type of software or uh, or also ENVI software, okay? So when you want to do in this, this type of software, then we have to, first of all, we need to make the atmospheric correction of remote sensed data. To get the satellite image and also need atmospheric correction. In this time, we don't need because we are using here the Google Earth Engine platform. Okay, and complex multi-component instruction methodology use of the derivative spectra technique. So all of the things we try to use in Google Earth Engine platform very quickly we can easily do that. Okay, in this time, in this time dissolve organic matter. So in this time we can divide it into two part: photic, depth, and dome. So basically, vertical distance from the water surface to the one person subsurface in radiance level. So basically, photic depth is the vertical distance from the vertical depth from the water surface to the one person subsurface in radiance level. Okay, and depth is mainly which sunlight penetrates the water column. It is the depth of the photic depth. 
only for that and into and dome is that introduce the into the oceanic uh, near shore or inland water bodies when phytoplankton consume the nutrients and convert them into om om means the organic matter okay phytoplankton consume the different types of nutrient and convert them into organic matter zooplankton eat the phytoplankton and convert into organic matter and bacteria pl uh, plankton uh, decompose organic matter so this is the dom of organic matter okay dissolved organic matter is that we can create the uh, create the dissolved organic matter using the three process and dissolved organic matter also you can see dom uh, mainly it will be uh, maybe reduce the photic depth as well as decomposition of the phytoplankton such as carbon dioxide organic, organic nitrogen sulfur phosphorus okay as well also hum uh, humic substance called eolo substance okay different uh, all of the um, organic or inorganic matter will be uh, produced using this way okay so now uh, we talk about that water penetration bathymetric so water penetration so mainly uh, it identifies the optimum spectral wavelength to obtain the depth into ethanol nanometer 480 nanometer so it uh, this penetration displays mainly it minimum absorption minimum scattering and minimum reflectance and maximum transmission this place called the water penetration of bathymetric and if the sensor for the bathymetric is that this is the nanometer okay and sea surface is that depth okay this is a theoretical part also about that it's not much so also you can get the some penetration problem because sun's light is bent or refracted more its true occurs and the atmosphere and the water column okay okay also you can get the some active uh, sonar re, uh, sensing in here sound navigation ranging also you can get the some active sonar re sensing okay okay we can also do for the okay in this time lidar data set uh, scanning the hydrographic operational airborne leader survey okay. so it's not needed this time okay so when you want to work with the lidar data set or you can um, this type of data we can also do for the active lidar sensing about that it also possible to also use for that a uh, bathymetric or water penetration also use for that water quality monitoring okay so thermal infrared or uh, remote sensing during the day at the night okay daytime versus nighttime ti rms okay also get the defined time period for the water surface temperature okay so in this time uh it is the water surface temperature is also possible so um, okay that time this is the fe hrr tr composite of the us cost and this is that another satellite image fe hrr drive from the sst map okay this time period for the Golo valley also this okay so il nino south oscillation okay so in this time okay so other application areas it has also precipitation aerosol water vapor snow and ice and water quality so water quality monitoring in the remote sensing and gis so pollutants are the com coming from the specific on concentrate point such as factor okay non point is that okay so you also read about all of the slides i'll just send you major non point source is the sediment nutrient acid uh, heavy metal toxic mineral okay major source is that also you can see okay and um, Based address by integrating, in, we use at the institute in situ data, GIS and remote sensing data and modeling, and interdisciplinary the collaboration about the in situ data and GIS remote sensing data for checking the accuracy about that. And some factor including in water quality model such as the topography, salt, salt shape, aspect, land use, okay, uh, land cover, meaning for the roughness of coefficient, okay, all of the C C carb number storm data okay all of these things will be as a factor including the water quality model when you have to do that also you can see it is the soil loss erosion is also correlated with that water quality model suppose when the soil erosion then oh, water is also polluted okay suppose when the soil erosion also mixing with the different types of uh, soil organic or inorganic matter with the water so that's why in this time they are also including here the rusli model because soil loss erosion we can measure using the rusli model and we can calculate the how much soil is eroded okay using that so this type of factor is also responsible for the water quality modeling when you want to do that 
as well as also you can say a potential mo uh, model output cons uh, concentrate of the peak flow total cell erosion identify and map special extent of the new train and sediment erosion information may be used for the optimizing management practice okay so this is the theoretical part you also found okay so this is what theoretical part about that uh, how we can easily monitor the chlorophyll as well as also monitor that um about that uh, total suspended solid in this time we also need to talk about the another thing is that it's very important at the present time this equation it's called the automated water extraction index a w e i okay so basically uh it's a new about that when you want to extract the water for suppose as a surface uh, from the surface, we are using at the different types of indices to extract the water body, such as NDWI, it is a normalized difference water index, or MNDWI, or other types of index we are using for extract the water body. Suppose you get a satellite image. So, first of all, when you want to make the water quality monitoring, first of all, you want to extract the water pixel value. Satellite image, I got. Suppose I have a Sentinel 2 satellite image. First of all, I need to extract the water pixel value from the Sentinel-2 satellite imagery and then apply the different types of model to monitor the water quality. So this is the one kind of uh, index is that an automated water extraction index. Okay. And this is the equation you can see. Okay. And, and also get the source about that you want to write, read about the more about this paper how they create this uh, equation for the water, uh, automatic water extraction index. You also read about that paper. I will send you all of the material, then you also better for your understand. So in this time, we are also oh, using oh, this. Oh, yeah. Share the paper with me, okay? Okay, okay, I will send all of the things. There are no problem after completing class. I will send you all of the details about that. Then it will see your better practice, the theoretical part, how it will be work, how this, uh, they are, how to create this equation. So all of the things we can create, uh, understand about this, uh, okay. Okay, so mainly you can see all of those uh, index we are using for extract the water bodies, such as uh, NDWI, MNDWI, NDMI, WRI, AWEI. So AW, in this time we are using here the AWEI, so automated water extraction using this equation and find out the water pixel value. And when I want to get the water pixel value, in this water pixel value, I want to apply the different types of algorithm for total suspended solid, for chlorophyll, for uh, such as uh, turbidity, okay. So also you can see this is the, okay, so this is the paper, you also read that about that paper. So mainly in this paper, they are discuss about that how they create the automatic water extraction and how it will be work for the this index, okay. Not only for the other index, how it will be work and how they create this type of index. You also get the information from here. Okay, and also get the accuracy about the water. Suppose NDWI or AWEI, which is better for the extraction of the water pixel. And this type of information you can get from here. Okay, as well as they make the correlation and regulation analysis between the all of those uh, water index and check which is the better. Okay. Okay, so now also you can see this is the another paper. So mainly this paper uh, estimate the chlorophyll chlorophyll A concentration in the in this Lanahul Lake using the Sentinel-2 multispectral instrument. So in this time, we are using this Sentinel-2 satellite multispectral instrument or surface reflectance data and then try to make the chlorophyll for the any specific inland water using this process. Okay, so you also read the paper, then you also get the process about that how they work and which band they are working for that. You also get the information about that and also check about that how they are using their uh, accuracy assessment, how they are for the accuracy, how they do that. Okay, so you also try to read about that. So you can see this is the algorithm. So mainly this algorithm, uh, they are downloading the imagery Sentinel-2 level 1C. Okay, and in this time they are using at the SNAP. SNAP is that another tool for the remote sensing they are using other SNAP, but downloading the Sentinel-2 satellite imagery from Google Earth Engine uh, level 1C. After this, also if you want to also use the Copernicus or uh, the uh, Copernicus site for downloading the remote license data and use it SNAP. SNAP is the remote license uh, software, another software for the remote sensing analysis and also make the imagery level to 1. Okay. And after that, you can see chlorophyll A sample in insert 
So in this time, they also get the some ground root data, spring and also fall. Two time period they are using in here. And also you can see pixel value instruction according to the sample location. In this time, they are what can they, you can see, pixel value extraction. Suppose I want to create the um, water quality monitoring uh, application using the Sentinel-2 satellite imagery and I take some pixel value, okay? And I also take the same pixel value from my ground root, okay? From the ground root, I also take the same pixel, uh, uh, same uh, ground root pixel and also check about this chlorophyll in my laboratory. After that, you can see what can do. So mainly they are uh, provide the evolving algorithm, the equation, algorithm from the literate reference, such as type of the longer metric, exponential, linear, and adjustment index for the equation, R square, R, RM, AC, AME, so NAC, and also check the uh, validation about the data set. They are also needed at the RMSE. Okay, so when I can get the two types of pixel value from the satellite image, as well as we can also get the value from the groundwater, then we are using here the RMSE or MAE for getting the validation about our result or compare. And generally, uh, generate the chlorophyll A concentration maps. So mainly that concentration map for that spring summer with max value about that chlorophyll, spring summer without max value in the chlorophyll, and fall winter. They create this type of map. Okay. So in this time, we try to apply this method and create this a chlorophyll map in our Google Earth Engine platform. Okay, so then it's also better practice for us. Okay, so let's go about that. I simply open my code editor. Okay, so okay. Okay, so in this time, uh, okay. So in this time, we are just uh, break for the three minute or five minute. Okay, so then we will continue. Okay, just five minute for the break. Okay, I just I simply drink some water then continue. Okay. No problem. No problem. Okay. Okay. okay.
Okay, can you hear me? Hello. Okay, can you hear me? Okay, so now we'll start about that. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, so welcome back. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay, okay, so now we'll start from here. Okay. Okay, so let's go about that. So here I already developed the code about my research work for identify the chlorophyll, total suspended solid and permeability. Okay. So this time I will try to discuss about all of the code, what I will do in here. And also you can see the unit is that we calculated the is the milligram per liter for the total suspended solid. And for the turbidity to use at the nephrometric unit, okay, which I already show you in our slide for the nephrometric unit we are using in here. So let's go about that. So before that, I also try to show you the one, one another part is that chlorophyll index separately how we can easily measure the chlorophyll index talk about that and then also move, talk about the total suspended solid and also talk about the turbidity unit is the ntu okay so basically today we will try to cover this three part how you can easily measurement using the google earth engine platform and then we also try to discuss for the next further class we also try to discuss about this wave application you can see because for the wave uh -huh. we also need some uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, can you, can go, you go back, back to, to what you just showed to me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is, is this, this uh, ocean, ocean water, water or inland, inland water? water? It's inland water. Okay. It's inland, inland water. water. Yeah. We can also apply oh. it to inland water. There is no problem. But it is uh, some part also for the ocean. Okay, so some part is also oh. for the ocean. And basically, yeah. in this time, our task is that what is the relation with that land use land cover classification with water quality okay. monitoring okay so that's why you also okay. try to make this classification result also in here you can see this inland water and also some uh, ocean water is also possible and we also get the some coastal water okay so basically in the coastal okay. side we can get the yeah. more turbidity more chlorophyll but in the in the middle of the ocean there is the not mass okay so now we talk about that so let's go so for that i can simply open my code about the only for the chlorophyll index how you can easily do that so okay okay so ndci so ndci mainly identify the chlorophyll index and we already know about that what is the chlorophyll chlorophyll uh, it can be phytoplankton zooplankton or bacterioplankton or anything okay about that so I simply click the run and that will discuss about that. So in this time, uh, our first condition is that atmospheric correction. Okay. But in Google Earth Engine platform, uh, the benefit is that uh, it already atmospheric correction. Okay. And final class, we also try to discuss about that, this type of wave application, how we can really create this type of wave application. So that's why we can easily monitor for the any inland water, inland water, what is the condition of that uh, water quality monitoring success? Okay, this code is for that.
Okay, okay. Okay. In this term, we just we just talk about that without wave application. Okay. So without wave application, all of the theoretical part we try to complete. And then for the further next class, we also try to discuss about that how we can easily create this type of wave application so that you can simply select your observation time period such as you can simply select the time period suppose january suppose first uh, january to select the variability and then simply click to the run click to the submit so now it's showing the result about this place what is the condition of the turbidity and unique is the fnu philometric and if we can got in here you can see about the turbidity and you can see uh, for this color legend identify low and this type of color identify the high okay so mainly in this time we can find out the high turbidity in this region okay and between these different time period you can see suppose turbidity chart from this we can easily identify when the turbidity is the high we can get the high turbidity is the February to 24, 2023. Okay, and what's the value we can got in here? Okay, also you can see when it will be low, we can get this from the chart. All of the data we can easily get. Not only for that, suppose I want to measurement about the chlorophyll, then select the chlorophyll and submit. So now it's showing the result as the chlorophyll. What is the condition of the chlorophyll about this water body? And we can also get the result. So this is the high and it's the low. Okay, and this is the more, uh, moderate. In this time, simply click on here. I can get the time series chart look like that. Chlorophyll index. This result will be negative one to positive one. Okay. We can easily download all of the chlorophyll index result and get the when it will be high and it will be low. We can easily identify. As well as also, you can see the total suspended solid and submit. So now it will be showing the total suspended solid. Unit is the milligram per liter. Okay. Per liter, how much milligram of total suspended solid? It can be different types of um, organic or inorganic. It can be clay, sealed, or soil, anything. It that doesn't matter. But all of those things we consider as a suspended solid on the water. So in this time, we can get this type of map. And we can easily identify from this map when it will be high and when it will be low about the total suspended solid. And it also showing the animation about that. As well as also, you can see, we can get the time series chart look like that. When it will be high, when it will be low, you can either identify from this time series chart. So when I click on here, I can get the chart from here. You can say I can get this result for 620 total suspended solid. 620 milli, this unit is the milligram. Okay. So 600, uh, 602 milli, uh, milligram per liter. Okay. Also, you can see I can get this 2012. Okay. When it will be high, we can get the high in the March 11, 2022. Okay, so this is type of result. We also try to start when you want to complete our theory part and also develop our code for our next class for the web application. So let's go about our today's. So I open my code editor. So first of all, NDCI, we try to discuss about the NDCI means the normalized difference water index. Okay. So I simply open this code in here. So NDCI. Okay, then click to the run. So basically, these tags we can run for this leg of the Hatirji leg. Okay, so this is our Hatirji leg. And from that, we try to extract what is the condition of the NDCI. NDCI means that normalized defines water, normalized defines chlorophyll index. And chlorophyll can be phytoplankton, zooplankton, or organic, organic, all of the things we consider as a chlorophyll in here. And where we can uh, more concentration of the uh, about that uh, chlorophyll, we consider this is the polluted water. Okay. And where we can get the low level of concentration of the chlorophyll, we consider it as a normal or good quality water about this. Okay. So in this time you can see we are also adding here this 
um, water quality and it showing the polluted. It means that it is the high density of the chlorophyll. And it means that this is the low density of chlorophyll. Okay, so this is my boundary. I want to use it and then check where it will be high and very low. We can easily identify. So now what is the process? We can just follow the same process which I already show you in a paper for the follow chart. Mm, where is it? Yeah, this follow chart. Okay, so in this step, we are using here the downloading. We are using the Sentinel-2 satellite imagery. Uh, Google Earth Engine, we are using the level 1C data set. Okay, or if you want to also use level 2, there is the no problem. So level 1C data set. Now we just pixel value extraction according to the sample location. In this time, we take this overall. So for the, in this time, we can take the result for the whole boundary about this inland water of the Hatirji Lake. Okay, and then what can I do? First of all, you can see it's very easy way can identify. So I use here this satellite images. So mainly this is a surface reflectance of Sentinel-2 satellite imagery. If you want to check it say from here, then I can get all of the information about this imagery. So you can see this is the level 2A data set. Okay, Sentinel-2 multi-spectral level 2A. So in this time we are using this data set. And uh, in this time, my first target is that from this data set, I want to extract the water pixel because I want to identify the chlorophyll on the water. So that's why I need to extract the water from this satellite image. So for that, what can I do? I want to use at the NDWI technique. Okay. So I will use at the NDWI technique. Okay. So I can get the NDWI map look like this. So this basically this is the NDWI. NDWI mainly showing the result about the normalized difference water index. So in this time you can see, so I hope you are already doing my uh, previous uh, seven days online training program. And I hope you will already know about the, all of the function, how it will be work, okay? All of the function you already know for the image filtering, filtering about the image. So in this time I simply skip that part because you already know about all of the things. How can we use the filter bounce function, filter dead function, short function, fast function, then flip with our shape file. Okay, then I can get the image look like that. You can see this is my image. Okay, so this is my Sentinel-2 surface reflectance image. I want to get in here. Okay, this surface reflectance image. Now I want to extract from water pixel. Okay, I want to use at the NDWI technique and extract the water pixel value. Okay, so you can see for that what can I do? I just simply use at the water marks function. Okay, so in this time what can I do? I take a function. And put the function variable name is that uh, NWIA. So this is the function variable name. Okay, then put here the element name is the image. So now I simply use at the curly bracket and put here my function image normalized difference. I use at the normalized difference function between the green and near infrared band. So basically, uh, it, it's only extract the NWI. NWI formula is the green minus near infrared band divided by green plus near infrared band. Okay. Then I can simply use here the name is the NWI. Okay. And then I want to extract the pixel value. Okay. So I want to take all of those NWI pixel value, get at the negative one. So get at the negative one in means that all of those positive value. Okay. All of those positive value for the NWI identify the water pixel. If you want to check about the NWI pixel value, say you can simply check suppose NDWI. Pixel hello. So the result of the NW equation is positive value for the water feature. Okay. So positive value is identify the water feature and negative value or zero for the soil or terrestrial vegetation. Okay, in this time. So from this we can identify that all of this positive value it identify the water okay water pixel so that's why in this time uh, i already know this is my water body so that's why in this time i want to use at the get at the all of those get at the negative one so all of those get at the negative one i consider it as a water pixel value okay and from this you can see we also know about that all of the positive value is that water okay so for that we are using at the negative one get at the negative one and extract only for the water 
stack only for the water stack only for the water and now i want to show the water image so you can see i want to get this water image look like that so in this time it look like that because all of the things will be water so now in this water i want to apply the equation of ndci so ndci is the normalized difference chlorophyll index and we already know about that chlorophyll index in our slide it mainly depend on the red and near infrared band okay so if you want to check it our pre pdf file we already discussed about that chlorophyll mainly it will be strongly absorption strongly absorption of near infrared and red okay so you also read i also send you this uh, slide you also try to read about that slide then you also get the better idea about that okay so i already show you this part mainly chlorophyll it's mainly working for the strongly absorption two band so strongly absorption in this time what near infrared band and red band okay it is strongly absorption so that's why in this time i am using here the near infrared band b5 and use at the b4 because it is strongly absorption okay so i simply take a variable you can see i take a function variable name is that uh, ndci you can use any variable name then put the element name is the image okay then i simply put the variable name is the ndci then put call the image normalize difference i put here the near infrared and red because in the polar field is highly absorption of near infrared band and red band so i simply put here the band name and rename it ndci and return as a band ndci band okay so now i want to show the result in here image ndci and i can get the result look like that so i simply open that okay so in this time i get the, get the image look like that okay and in this time this satellite image you can see mainly this satellite image only for the one time period image because you can check the image in here which i want to use in here it's only for the one image because you can see i simply suppose i simply print that image uh, i use here the print and call the img and then simply click the run in this time i can get the result how many images i want to use i use only for the one image you can see i use only for the one image and this image acquisition time period is the year of 2021 17 march okay so i use here this image collection only for the one image so that's why in this time it's not possible to create the time switch chart because it's only for the one image okay only for the one time image so that's why it's not possible to create the time series chart but if you want you can also use here this time series chart okay just when i simply take the call and continue just a Okay, so now you can see here, I can get only for the one image, and though that's why it's not possible to create the time series chart. But if you want, you can also create the time series chart when you want to use at the multi image. Suppose in this time, I also try to show you this process. Suppose I want to just use here a function. Suppose I want to use a function. This function is that filter, filter metadata. Okay, and this filter metadata, I want to put here this cloud pixel per sentence. And put here this value such as less than one okay and then i want to check how many images i want to got in here so for that i can simply commenting this and simply print the image and use at the size function and click the run so basically in this time we take only for the one image so that's why it's not possible to create the time switch chart. In this time here, I can get total 32 emails. Okay, for my region between the time period of year of 2021. Okay, so now I want to 
create in here for the median composite, simply use at the median, and then I simply use at the clip function, and then click to the run. So now it work. You can see. Click to the run. And now it created the median composite. Okay. So in this time it created the median composite. And from this median composite, I can easily create in that time series chart between the year of 2021 to 2000, uh, year of 2021, first January from 2021, uh, December. Okay. So in this time here I can use how many MS? You can simply print that. So simply use the print function and call the IMG and use that click to the run. 23 band I want to get, but total image collection is that 23. Okay, so in this time, I want to clear the time series chart about the MDCI. I want to check between this time period what is the condition of the MDCI for the different time period for this leg. Okay, so let's go about that. We try to discuss. Okay. 